So this study was part of the 16th International HLA and Immunogenetics Workshop. And through that, we used the Allergen Laboratory's high-resolution sequence-based typing samples and looked at something known as family studies. And from these family studies, haplotypes were derived and assorted according to ethnicity. And then we used the National Marrow Donor Program biannual rare allele list, and we compared what we found to see if we had any rare null alleles. And then if we, could, if we found a rare null allele, we then determined these associations. Finally, if an association was developed, we compared it to the unrelated data to see if these in unrelated individuals had characteristics of this association. So in order to understand what a family study is, if you recall, like I said before, Every person has two of each HLA locations of A, B, or whatever. This is, this is what serology looks like. So in order to determine what the haplotype is, the haplotype is basically just a strand of DNA going across A, B, C, D, R, D, Q that comes from either your mother or your father. So you, every person has two haplotypes. So what we do is, using a family study, we compare the subject with siblings, or in between siblings, to try and determine which components travel together. So for example, in this one, we're going to look at these two siblings, because as we can see, the first sibling has an A01 and an A29, and the other one has an A01 and an A01. So from that, we can determine potentially this A01 traveled together. Then going on to the next section, the B location, we see that this potentially the eight travel together. Now, as we go along, we can start developing certain ideas of which chunks came together. And finally, after we do that systematically throughout the whole entire family, we can then develop this color code system. So what we have here is red and blue represent the father's haplotype and the purple and yellow represent what the mother haplotypes are. So if you imagine we take all the, say, red blocks and put them together, that is what the haplotype is. So as you can see here, though, in this family study, for the subject as well as one of the siblings, we had either a blank entry there for the A location. Either it wasn't tested, it was actually a null allele, or it was something that had previously been undiscovered, say, A89 or something like that. So as you can see here, serology just provides a general tool that we can develop these haplotypes. And what we really need is a high-resolution sequence-based typing. So after we completed 180 family studies, we developed 640 haplotypes that spanned the typical HLA. And from that, three rare null alleles were identified, and all of these were from Caucasian families. However, one of them, A2307 null, had to be discarded because it only came up once. Now, just to understand the prevalence of these potential rare null alleles, here's just a pie chart. Blue represents A0104 null, yellow A0243 null, and finally green A2307 null. Luckily, we came up between A0104 null and A0243 null showed up in three independent families, so potentially we could have formed associations from that. So specifically for A0104 null, within these three families, this allele was potentially inherited by eight total individuals. Now remember, this is significant because previously to this study, this A0104 null had only been reported under three times. So being present in eight individuals is quite significant in updating this rare null allele list. Now within each family, both parents have an A01 type, and one family had a parent that was homozygous across A for A01. So down here in this table are the extended haplotypes that we developed for this rare null allele. And something that came up significant was that between two families, we had the rare null allele being associated with a B0801 and a C0701. Now, this BC combination is very important because when it is paired with the original 
expressed allele, the AO101, it is the most common haplotype within Caucasians. Now the other BC combination associated with the rare null allele is also associated with a couple other A's, so that's potentially a uh, signifier of a recombination event. Now with the AO243 null, it also showed up within three families and was potentially inherited by 11 total individuals. And an interesting side note that we found was that one family had a mother and a father was potentially an AO243 null, which in a sense of probability is almost possible. So if we look here at the extended haplotypes developed for the AO243 null, we kind of developed the sense that even though the DP beta 1 section potentially has a similarity with the O401, what we really need to look for is associations going from left to right. And that is because, if you recall, the DNA strand. The DNA strand has certain locations to it. So as you can see here, even though potentially within the AO243 null, we had associations between A, DR, DQ, and DP, there's a lot of space in between those. So just because certain associations might develop between those, it's just out of coincidence. What we really need is like in the AO 104 null case in which A was paired with a B and a C, which is very closely linked together. So once we did the comparisons with the unrelated database, we discovered that for this one that had AO 104 null and then the rest of it, it also showed up with three individuals of three different ethnicities of African American, Caucasian, Hispanic ethnicity. And so across four familial lines, this extended haplotype existed. This is significant. Also within another one of our extended A0104 null haplotypes, it also came up within another potential unrelated Caucasian. However, for the AO243 null haplotypes, no potential associations were found. So from our data set, we could not draw any conclusions off of this rare null allele. However, for the A0104 null case, because it showed up in four unique families across three separate ethnicities, this lends evidence to the possibility of one defining event in history that developed this haplotype and now has discreetly dispersed across several populations across the world. Also, the existence of that other associations that we found for A0104 null provides maybe a general indication that some association may exist. However, we typically like an HLA to develop at least three independent families that have the indication of an association. Now, the really important thing, though, to note is that within these two haplotypes that were developed and then tested with the unrelateds, that linkage between the A, B, and C remain the same. So this association is of utmost importance because it heightens the possibility of a poor mismatch between patient and donor. Because remember, within Caucasians, an AO101 matched with this B and C block that also corresponds with the null allele is within 25% of the population. So according to the IMGT database, if a lab fails to test for exon 4 for this rare null allele, we can quickly see how someone that has an expressed AO101 could quickly, based upon the BC linkages, could easily be given a null allele potentially from an unrelated patient. So in order to prevent such a null allele being paired with this AO101, thus leading to GVHD, we suggest two main steps. And that is that from the laboratory that has provided unrelated information, it should be first requested if exon 4 was investigated for the A locus. If not, then in serological testing, we should look for the BO8, CO7, DR beta 103, and the DQ02 or 03, and see if that is present within the unrelated. If that is so, it then needs to move on to the sequence based typing to determine if the A locus is in fact an expressed allele or a null allele. I would like to thank Ro Rosalind Strickland, Nedrin Starling, and the Office of Civic Education Initiatives for providing me with this internship and this opportunity. I would also like to thank Midhat Askar, 
Iwen Zhang, Paul Kzawik, Don Thomas, Ray Jarkiko, Heather Elric, and the entire staff at Algen Laboratories for providing me with an educational experience and providing me with the guidance along with my project. And finally, I would like to thank John McMichael for assisting me with the data collection.